Um, welcome everyone. Today I'm going to talk about antibiotic resistance and how we are trying to prevent it and fight against it. You know, just about five years ago or so, I was sitting in one of those chairs listening to these type of uh, presentations. So sure a lot of things can happen in five or ten years. Let me just show you an example for that from the scientific world, actually in connection with uh, antibiotic resistance. But a scientist took a picture of a plate in 2009, um, and what you can see here is these dots are antibiotics, uh, and this yellowish color is the bacteria as they grow. But as you can see, um, the bacteria couldn't grow near to these uh, little circles because of the high concentration of antibiotic uh, killed them. But then the scientist took a picture of the exact same plate in 2019, and uh, what she saw was that the bacteria were able to, well, grow closer to the antibiotics. So in 10 years, the bacteria were able to, well, develop a mechanism to uh, defend themselves against those antibiotics. So that is actually what uh, antibiotic resistance means, that the bacteria are uh, able to defend themselves against uh, all type of antibiotics. Um, so if we try to use them, uh, they are ineffective. So a possible solution could be uh, for that to develop new type of antibiotics or uh, to combine different agents. And so uh, the in combination might be also effective. Well, uh, we are working with such combinations. And uh, in our case, they are beta-lactam antibiotics and beta-lactamase inhibitors. While um, beta-lactam antibiotics are a typical um, type of antibiotics like penicillins, they have a typical structure. Mm, and uh, we use them in connection, in, in combination with beta-lactamase inhibitors. But uh, what are beta-lactamases and why do we need inhibitors against them? Let's talk about that. Mm, well, beta-lactamases are basically enzymes which are able to break up the structure of beta-lactam antibiotics and thereby they are providing resistance to the bacteria. But if we can block this mechanism with so-called beta-lactamase inhibitors, then the resistance might be gone. So we are testing uh, beta-lactam antibiotics and beta-lactamase inhibitors in combinations. Um, and it's important to point out here that the combinations we are working with are mostly being under development. So uh, we kind of want to work forward and collect some data on these um, uh, combinations. So the aims of uh, our project is to define against which of these combinations are resistance genes spreading in the environment right now before you know, we even start to use them uh, in the everyday life. Um, and those bacteria which are containing these uh, strains are considered to be the most dangerous ones. Um, they are going to have the highest chance to be resistant against those combinations in the future. We also want to define uh, those dangerous things as well in the future. Um, and also, of course, the most effective beta-lactam antibiotic and beta-lactamase inhibitor combinations. So, um, during my project, I systematically tested 69 different Klebsiella pneumoniae strains. Um, Klebsiella pneumoniae is a typical human pathogen uh, causing mostly pneumonia, so lung disease, lung infection. Mm, and we exactly knew the genetic background of these bacteria, so we knew exactly which genes, which beta-lactamases those uh, bacteria contained. And I tested them against the combinations in the table. Mm, the experiments themselves were MIC measurements. Um, MIC is the short for minimum inhibitory concentration, so it's the lowest concentration of an antibiotic which can uh, inhibit the growth of uh, bacteria. And for that, I used such plates. These are 96 well plates because if you can see, they have 96 different small uh, wells in them. Um, and uh, while the experiments themselves, or during an experiment, I put the same concentration of an antibiotic or a combination in all of the wells, so in the whole plate, and put different strains in every single well differently, so I could watch or see whether those bacteria were able to grow in the presence of those antibiotics or, or couldn't. Yeah, let's talk about the results. So because of the shortage of time, I won't be able to talk about every uh, combination, so I'm only going to show you one concrete example. 
and that is going to be astronam in combination with avibactam. So here astronam is the beta-lactam antibiotic and avibactam is the beta-lactamase inhibitor. Uh, and as you can see on the left, um, when I tested the bacteria only against astronam, so the antibiotic, um, more than 95% of the bacteria were resistant to that antibiotic, which is quite a high, high percentage. But then when I combined it with avibactam, you can see the difference, almost 50% of the bacteria were susceptible this time. So then there's the question, why is this combination so effective? What type of genes can this combination block or inhibit that the others can't? Uh, I wanted to look deeper into it, and I found that some of the susceptible uh, strains contained MDM1s and MDM5s. So um, these are typical um, beta-lactamases. The, they are in the group of metallo-beta-lactamases. Um, it's known that metallo-beta-lactamases provide resistance against a, a lot of antibiotics, so it's really important to uh, well, work with them and investigate them. So I wanted to investigate further more, so I listed all the strains I had, which contained NDM1s and NDM5s. Well, um, between NDM1 and NDM5, there's only one mutation uh, difference, so mostly they are giving the same results. Um, so, as you can see in this uh, column, some of the strains were susceptible, some of them were resistant to, uh, to this combination. So I couldn't really tell for sure that astronom and avibactam together can actually uh, inhibit and, or, or block uh, NDM1s because, for example, here in the second row, I can't be sure that the NDM1 is causing the resistance or another gene that is present in, in that bacteria. So another uh, experiment was needed to answer this question. And for that, um, I tested bacteria against the listed uh, combinations, but these bacteria only contained NDM1s. So I won't go into detail how, about the method, how we created these bacteria, but, uh, but the most important uh, part is that these bacteria only contained NDM1s as uh, beta-lactamases. And uh, as the table shows, so the first two rows, uh, against astronam, these bacteria were uh, resistant. But when I combined it with avibactam, I got the results I, I hoped for. Um, the bacteria were actually susceptible to this uh, combination. And um, this is important because, as you can see, against well, most of the combinations, uh, this beta-lactamase actually provided resistance. So uh, astronom and avibactam seems to be uh, promising uh, in the future against, um, well, against these uh, combinations. Yeah, let's summarize uh, up quickly um, this project. So uh, we tested different beta-lactam antibiotic and beta-lactamase inhibitor combinations against uh, several uh, bacteria to find which uh, genes are causing the resistance. Uh, and with the help of that, we also want to identify the most dangerous strains uh, which spread, let's say, in Hungary or in Europe or uh, some, some area. We are going to figure it out uh, later. Yeah, well, my presentation has come to its end. Uh, let me just express how grateful I am to the National Academy of Scientist Education because they are the ones who made it possible for me to be part of the lab and this project. And I'm also really grateful uh, for my mentor, uh, Dr. Balint Kincsesh, who is actually also preparing a presentation for you. Uh, so be make sure to listen to it uh, as well. Um, yeah, thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions according the project or the program, maybe I'm going to be around so you can find me with any questions. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much for this nice lecture.